presuming Mr. Shane Patton, Mrs. Rachel Patton. Oh, oh my God. Yes. Is that not correct? No, it's correct. I'm just, um, I'm getting used to it. We just got married the day before yesterday. Yeah, I am aware. Congratulations. Oh. Yeah, I think, um, this is bad. Wow. Yeah. Sounds so weird. That is Alexandra Daddario, starring in the first season of the hit HBO series, The White Lotus. That darkly satirical show has become a pop culture obsession, and last year earned Daddario an Emmy nomination for Best Supporting Actress. Daddario's career has taken her from soap operas to blockbusters to dramatic performances that have made her one of Hollywood's brightest young stars and a glamorous presence both on the red carpet and to her 23 million Instagram followers. Her latest role comes in a series based on the supernatural novels of the legendary Anne Rice. Alexandra and I got together in her native New York for a Sunday sit-down. Healing people. I think feels better than that. Alexandra Daddario has crossed over into the world of the paranormal. Getting angry won't help my patients. In the AMC series Mayfair Witches, she plays Dr. Rowan Fielding, a neurosurgeon who learns she is the latest in a dynasty of powerful witches. Do all the Mayfairs have gifts? We shot in some of the old houses in New Orleans, yeah. which, are, which are beautiful. It captured perfectly the the feeling of New Orleans, the creepiness of the the books. Did you know anything about these stories when you were handed the script? I didn't actually. I hadn't read Anne Rice growing up. She had this incredible imagination and she would delve into sort of the darker aspects of human nature in this very um, entertaining way. Do you like doing those kind of supernatural horror, I guess you could call it, some combination of those two? I do. I never expected to do the kinds of things that I've been able to do and work with visual effects and these fantasy stories that really makes it fun and you can go crazy with the characters and really, really push it. The 36-year-old Daddario has been pushing boundaries since she was a kid growing up in New York City. The daughter of two prominent attorneys, Alex, as she is known, opted out of the family business somewhere around the age of 10 after joining a friend at drama class. We had to think of something sad and cry. I, you know, had no idea how to do that. My friend was crying about she had tried to teach her hamster to swim. Oh no. Yeah, it didn't end well. Oh no. And she broke down. I shouldn't laugh. I know, no, it's not funny. And I will never forget. I was like, oh my goodness. You can take a moment from your real life, something that is, even at a young age, I realized that there was something therapeutic, I think, in that. So I got really into it. Then there were like agents that came to the acting class and they wanted me to do commercials. And so began your hand modeling career for That's Barbie. Right. That's right. <laughs> I was hired as the hand model because they thought I was too old. I was maybe big for 11 or something. Already aging out of parts at 12. I know. I mean, come on. But I was trying so hard to get my face in the <laughs> shot. When you're a kid, everyone's so nice to you. As an adult, you know, people are like, stop doing that. As a kid, I'm like, are you comfortable in that position? Like, they knew what I was doing. It wouldn't be long before she got that close-up. When I was 16, I booked a soap opera. All my children. Money does not buy happiness. No, it just buys you all the beer you can drink, which I guess to you is happiness. And they did sign me to a contract that I ended up getting let go of after a year. Certainly between getting fired from the soap at 17 and booking my first big movie at 22, there were many tears and, you know, I'm quitting, I can't do this. But Daddario hung in then broke out, playing Annabeth Chase in two film adaptations of the popular Percy Jackson books. Stand up and fight, hero. It completely changed my life. It was a big movie, but it wasn't like I was an overnight star. But for me, it made an incredible difference in my career and the opportunities I had. 
The success of the Percy Jackson films led to roles for Daddario in big budget movies like Texas Chainsaw 3D. They're after me. The 2015 thriller San Andreas, where she starred with Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Get down! Get down! And two years later, opposite Zac Efron in the kitschy film reboot of Baywatch. You are trying way too hard. Trying's the best part. Summer. Baywatch didn't work. That's not a secret. But it was still huge for me because I was booking jobs off of just booking that job before right. it even came out. But Daddario has proven she can do much more than summer blockbusters, earning acclaim for her performances in True Detective. American Horror Story Hotel, and season one of the recent HBO sensation, The White Lotus, a dream job she told her agents she had to have. I really want to get a job. No, why would you do that? They were like, we're doing everything possible to get you this job. It was a very, very good job. And then it ended up being sort of everything I had been looking for. I think I made a mistake. The mistake is getting married. Daddario earned an Emmy nomination playing a newlywed on a nightmare honeymoon in Hawaii. What did you like about your character? I was able to draw a little bit from myself and some aspects of getting carried away with things. And also, I think there was a fantasy. She had a, an idea of how things were going to be. I can do that sometimes. In fact, Daddario wrote a happy ending to her own real-life love story. You also had some great news over the pandemic and that you met and married your husband. Congratulations. Yes. yes. What's that been like for you? It's been great. He's a, a wonderful man, but I've always wanted to be a mom and be married. And you guys bumped into each other right on the streets, right out here somewhere. <laughs> That's right. Or some <laughs> version of that. I mean, I, I told Vogue that, you know, and you called me out. You said, that sounds like a Nora Ephron movie. I did add a little romantic twist to our meeting, but we did actually have our first date right next door. And then on our second date, I brought my dog, and the dog wandered into the kitchen, and they, the people working in the kitchen just sort of were like, oh, hey, here's your dog. So it really is a Nora Ephron movie, the dog wandering in the kitchen. Well, that did happen, yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll take that. that part did. We'll take that part of it. I did call her out on the story, but she came clean. May 5th, tonight on AMC and Stern. A grill in New York, hosting our conversation. I to subscribe to the Sunday Sit Down podcast to hear the full interview with Alexandra Daddario. You can find that on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get yours. And next week, a favorite Sunday Sit Down with Emily in Paris herself, Lily Collins, on the current third season of the hit series, getting her start on screen in The Blind Side and growing up the daughter of a rock star. Lily Collins, next week on Sunday Today. Let's turn now and get another quick check of your local Sunday weather. Good morning, I'm Storm Team 4 meteorologist Ryan Miller. We have uh, pretty quiet weather conditions right now. Rain is going to be pushing into the Washington region later on this afternoon, and it looks like it's just going to be a rain event, folks. We may see a couple of wet snowflakes mix in here. The better likelihood of seeing a mix to even some snow will be into the Shenandoah Valley, Panhandle of West Virginia, Northwestern Maryland. Otherwise, we're all going to dry out here looking towards the day tomorrow. Sunshine, 50, lower 50s this week. including the dog who became a viral star for an eye-popping reaction to her first haircut. But up next, a visit to Las Vegas where Seth Rogen shows us around some cutting-edge, life-changing technology at the Consumer Electronics Show when Sunday Today comes right back. Rebuilds tooth density to extend the life of teeth. Crest, the number one toothpaste brand in America. Why are 93% of sleep member sleepers satisfied with their bed? Maybe it's because you can adjust your comfort and firmness on either side of your sleep member setting to help relieve pressure points and keep you both comfortable all night. The Queen Sleep Number 360C2 Smart Bed is only $899. Save $200. Ends Monday.
This weekend, the latest in technology from around the world is on display at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. Tech companies are rolling out their latest products there. Some are fun gadgets, but many have the potential to change the way we live, including some shown off to us by one of Hollywood's biggest stars who has a personal connection. NBC Technology correspondent Jake Ward has our Sunday Spotlight from Vegas. One in nine families will have to take care of an older person with Alzheimer's. Sorry. Seth Rogen and his wife Lauren are one of those families. My mom started showing signs of dementia when she was in her early 50s. I was in my early 20s. Lauren and Seth had just started dating. It was devastating to see Lauren see her mother go through these changes. And even with all their resources today, it was still a huge challenge. It was a hundred percent because we had financial resources that the situation was like remotely managed. Yeah. And if we didn't, it just would not. There is a growing lack of caregivers in this country. This is a crisis. And AARP CEO says it will touch all of us. You're either going to need a caregiver or be a caregiver. Seth and Lauren give grants to help pay for at-home help. And they're at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas to get the word out and to look at technology that can help bridge the gap, like this robot waiter. What would your grandparents have made, do you think, of a robot like this? My grandmother was born on a caravan fleeing the Cossacks. So right. if it wasn't trying to kill her for being Jewish, she would have loved it. <laughs> <laughs> this is retirement for the technology generation at a time when we have a caregiving crisis. And medical science has shown us you have to keep people connected and active for them to live longer, healthier lives. Multiple people can be touching it, interacting with it. We understand every touch it. People who are uh, not isolated or engaged live seven to eight years longer than someone who is isolated. This walker senses the terrain, assists as needed, and can fit in an overhead bin or a car trunk. This was all abstract to me until I saw the phone holder. For Seth and Lauren, tech is about getting out in front of Lauren's family risk. I track things and I, we have a, we talk about that we have a cooling device for our bed that helps yeah. me sleep well, which is a technology that helps my brain, right? A lot of our habits are reverse engineered from what we now understand as a way to keep yeah. your brain healthy longer. Are you prepared psychologically, do you think, to be the primary caretaker to Lauren if that's necessary? And I mean, obviously I will do whatever I have to do to keep my wife safe and, and, and healthy and happy for as long as possible. But yeah, I, obviously I think there's, it's much more hopeful than that, honestly. We want to teach everyone, especially young people, how to care for their brains. For Sunday Today, that's Jake Ward, Las Vegas. That's the beginning of it, I guess I would say. Jake, Seth, and Lauren, thank you very much. This week we highlight another life well lived. On January 27, 1967, three NASA astronauts in the inaugural Apollo 1 program were killed in a cabin fire as their command module sat on the launch pad at Cape Canaveral. The tragedy put the American space program in peril. But another group of unsung astronauts stepped up to ensure the race to the moon would continue and succeed. A physicist and marine fighter pilot named Walter.